The future depends on what you do today. If you want to be more powerful in life, educate yourself. You can continue, Mana. A dream doesn't become reality through imagination. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. The key to turning dreams into reality is action. This is what we are here for. Avenue 2021 is organized with the vision to empower and facilitate students to navigate their future and make their dreams real. Avenue 2021 holds significant prominence this year as it is for the very first time that we go global and have student participation not only from the local Indian schools in the Sultanate of Oman, but also have students participating from the schools and boards across the globe. Avenir is a platform where students will be empowered to confidently make wise career de decisions, which is crucial in guiding and shaping the future of the youth. A very good morning, everyone. We wholeheartedly welcome dignitaries from the Ministry of Education, Honorable Chairman, Board of Directors, Dr. Shivakumar Manikam, Senior Principal and Education Advisor, BOD, Indian Schools in the Sultanate of Oman, Mr. MP Vinoba, and the other esteemed members of the Board of Directors, distinguished officials from CBSE, acclaimed officials from the Indian Embassy, President, Indian School Vadikabi Management Committee, and other respected members of the committees of all the participating schools. All principals, vice principals, heads of various departments, coordinators, teachers, parents, and all the enthusiastic aspirants. We cordially welcome distinguished members of the business community and members of the educational set. A very warm welcome to all present here virtually with us for this session on day five of Avenue 2021. Indian School Alwadi Al Kabir is the torch bearer of this mega event under the auspices of the Board of Directors, Indian Schools in the Sultanate of Oman. Each day we have a special gemstone as a theme. The maroon colored garnet associated with visual spatial intelligence is the theme for today it signifies skills in puzzle building, painting, constructing, fixing, and designing objects that can fulfill their dreams as sculptors, artists, inventors, architects, mechanics, engineers. Welcome all once again. Your hosts for this morning are Manat Bagga of Class 8 and Joe Daniel of Class 9 from Indian School Alwadi Al Kabir. Dear audience, it is our pleasure and privilege to have you all here with us on this journey of transforming your dreams into reality. Dear participants, you are requested to fill in the feedback form, which will be posted in the description box towards the end of this session. Filling this form is necessary as it would fetch you a participation certificate. Attendees, you are also requested to post your queries in the chat box. It would be addressed by a distinguished guest during the Q&A session. Today, we are honored to have with us an eminent representative, Ms. Joymini Seal from the University of Sydney, Australia, who would discuss the pathways of numerous programs and courses the university offers. About the University of Sydney, the University of Sydney is Australia's first university. It is regularly ranked in the top 50 universities worldwide. The university has taught seven prime ministers, two Nobel Fortress, three astronauts, 110 Rhodes Scholars, one Putlizer Prize winner, and 145 Olympians, and many more. The University of Sydney is one of Australia's, of Australia's largest and most pre prestigious universities. 
established in 1850. It is ranked 38 in the world by a QS World University ranking 2022. It is ranked first in Australia and fourth in the world of graduate employability. Our esteemed speaker, Ms. Joymini Seal, will inform us of everything we need to know about the university and its courses. Before I hand over the virtual platform to our acclaimed speaker, let us watch a video about the University of Sydney. was indeed a splendid video. Now, I call upon our guest speaker for the session, Ms. Joymini Seal from the University of Sydney. Over to you, ma'am, for your presentation. Thank you so much, Manal. Thanks for such a uh, delightful introduction of me and the University of Sydney. Uh, so yes, as Manal just introduced, I am uh, Joymini Seal and I work as a recruitment advisor, international students for the markets of um, South Asia, Middle East and Africa at the University of Sydney. I'll just start my presentation. I'll just share the screen and let me know if you have a visibility of the uh, screen. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Perfect, thank you so much for that. Um, yes, so let me introduce to our world of the University of Sydney. Um, I'll just go up. Okay, so before I start about the university, it's just a little bit about myself. So as I just gave an introduction of myself, I have moved to Australia. It's just been a little over five years now. I actually chose Australia as my own study destination. And I arrived in Sydney some five years ago as an international student myself to pursue my master's degree. And um, after studying in uh, Sydney, I moved to Canberra for a short while because of a job opportunity. And now I'm again back in Sydney. So yes, I have lived in multiple cities across Australia and um, wherever I go, the country just never ceases to amaze me. Um, apart from that, I am um, like, I speak three global languages, Hindi, English, Bengali. Apart from that, um, uh, I am a little fluent, not uh, very superior in my abilities, but a little fluent in other Indian local languages. I am from India, as you might have already understood by now. And um, yes, I did travel extensively across um, Australia, South Asia, and a few Southeast Asian countries. And honestly, I chose Australia. When I, when I thought of Australia as an international student, I just thought of the weather here. We have so distinct four uh, seasons here. And the weather is always so pleasant, especially in Sydney. Uh, right now, um, as you may know that uh, we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So for us, um, we experience autumn during the your spring months. So right now we are in our autumn phase. Uh, we are actually uh, entering summer. So summer will be kicking in next month. And um, we have um, winters during your summer months, that is from April, May, June, we have our winters, our peak winter days. So yeah, um, that's about a, a little bit about the weather that we experience in Australia. Apart from that, as you all know, we have over a thousand, um, I think I'm wrong in saying thousand, I think there are over 3000 beaches just in the Eastern coast of Australia. And all the beaches are so spectacular. Even if I want to, I will not be able to complete visiting all the beaches even in one uh, year if I want to. I, so that's not even my bucket list anymore. Um, I honestly moved here because, of course, for better opportunities. And um, 
for the world class education that I have received uh, while studying my postgraduate degree. And uh, the multi, the Sydney as a city, and I would say that is true for all other cities, but Sydney specifically is consistently ranked among the friendliest cities in the world, uh, the most livable cities in the world. Sydney this year has been ranked the top 10, uh, we're the number 10 um, most uh, livable cities in the world. And uh, rightfully so, because we not only have, um, you know, the domestic uh, population here, it's such a good mix of all cultures and backgrounds here. We have people from um, over 190 countries, if I'm not wrong, um, currently residents of Sydney. Apart from that, there are regular multicultural festivals that we host. There are so many events, like, you know, we have the light show and our New Year celebration, the New Year Eve celebration is, of course, world known. The fireworks that we present every year is something that is a global um, spectacular event that we have to offer. Um, and here's we have, uh, you know, dedicated suburbs almost for, so our multicultural people from all backgrounds and cultures of the world have chosen a few of the suburbs as their suburbs. And so if you move into, say, one suburb, you will see, uh, the, you know, full of Indian restaurants, full of Indian people, culture, festivals and everything happening there. But just beside that same suburb, you would find a suburb where it's filled with people from the Middle Eastern regions. And uh, we celebrate Eid there. We have the Saturday night markets and um, there are so many gold stores. So you just know it's the Middle Eastern uh, kind of suburb. Like that is a demography. But everybody lives together and that's the beauty of Sydney. Um, yeah, so I'll move on to the next one. So before I actually move on, I'm just going to tell, tell a few housekeeping things that this session will run for one hour. Um, I, I will definitely try to keep my presentation to 30 minutes. I will not try to bore any of you with going more than that. After that, you can ask me any questions. You can keep on asking your questions uh, on the chat box while, we are, um, while I'm presenting but I will only answer your questions at the end of my presentation. Um, after the live question answer session, I have kept 10 minutes just for casual chat and discussion. If you want to know more about um, the University of Sydney, about Sydney, about Australia, about myself, that's the time for that, right? Okay, so yes, I think I've already said a lot about discovering Sydney and how Sydney is. Um, just reiterating the same facts once again, Sydney is Australia's largest and most dynamic city. We are the state capital of the um, state of New South Wales, which is located in the eastern side of Australia. And uh, NSW as a state is also known as the economic hub and the startup hub of um, the Australia and of the Southern Hemisphere. Just the New South Wales, the states, economic standings are at par and higher than the whole countries of Singapore, Malaysia, and the other Southeast Asian and the other Asia Pacific countries that we have neighboring. Um, Sydney is also home to um, the major big fours and other corporates and multinational corporations. Um, so all of the big MNCs headquarters are headquartered in Sydney. So if you look at opportunities like work opportunities, experience, your exposure as a student here in the city of Sydney, it's much, much, much higher than any other Australian city can ever offer. Apart from that, Sydney is also one of the most popular cities for international students. Um, I am an example of that myself uh, with over 178,000 students from overseas. So that is the volume of number of students that we welcome into our state and um, in our city every year, okay? So again, one of the most multicultural cities in the world with 73% of Sydney siders who are current residents of Sydney are actually born overseas. And 75% uh, um, speaks a language apart from English at their home. Like in my house, I speak one of the Indian languages. And since I told you like, you know, we have so many uh, people who are current residents of Sydney from different parts of the country, uh, of the globe. So they all speak different languages. So although we are in uh, English speaking land, but we are, I think, at definitely the most multicultural city that um, Australia has. Moving on, 
this is a little map. I know this is a bit messy probably for you to understand. But this is the map of our Camperdown and the Darlington campus of University of Sydney. So we are spread across a vast majority of the Sydney CBD, that is the Central Business District. Um, we were, as you know, Australia's first university and the oldest university. We were built by the same architects who have built the Oxford and the Cambridge universities in the UK. So we look identical to the Oxford University and the Cambridge University. You will see that in the next slide. But um, yeah, so we started off as one university, but then things changed and you know more and more demand happened. And we wanted to facilitate, uh, like include more facilities. And we wanted to offer our students, regardless of their citizenship status, the best education possible in Australia, in Sydney. And that's why we just kept increasing our uh, demography, our, um, our geographical demography here. So as you can see, we are currently this big, very, very spread out. And from our oval, this is the Victoria Park. So this is the park that belongs to the university. Just across the road, we you can see the uh, world known uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Sydney Opera House. It's just a walk away. Um, I'll move on to the next slide where you can see a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Yes, so here we come. Uh, this is my favorite photo. And um, all of our Sydney siders, um, most, um, I think the favorite photo for all of us, uh, because this shows a bird's eye view of Sydney, the CBD. This is the central business district, as you can see here. Beside that, we have the Sydney Opera House, which is, I think, known to most of us here today. Uh, just behind the Sydney Opera House is the Sydney, University of Sydney's Sydney Conservatorium of Music. So that is where some of our music school classes are held and trained. Um, like we offer, of course, uh, trainings and um, we offer workshops and other guest lecturers and those kind of additional um, curriculars, which are hosted here in the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, uh, which is very strategically placed right beside, behind the Sydney Opera House, which is, of course, known for the opera and other musical um, events that uh, uh, takes place throughout the year, uh, before COVID, of course. After COVID happened, uh, everything has dimmed down for us, but we are looking at backing up everything as soon as we can. Behind that, we have the Surrey Hills campus. So in Surrey Hills, we have a little, um, space again, which belongs to the University of Sydney, where we host a few of our classes that uh, is usually used by our School of Architecture and Design. They have a little facility there where they uh, brainstorm and they create new innovative kind of structures, uh, lightings, acoustics, visual arts, and those kind of uh, areas, and those kind of products really. So yes, that is built here in the Surrey Hills campus. Beside that, we have the CBD campus, where we host um, a few of our graduate um, management classes. So that belongs to the business school and we host regular management webinars, conferences and other such related um, you know, uh, areas uh, related to business and economics in this, um, in this area, in this uh, building. Beside that, we have our main campus on Darlington campus, which I just showed you, which is a vast big, our enormous campus that we have there. Apart from that, if you go 100 kilometers up from Sydney, we have a research farms and um, in the Southern Highlands. So that area is called the Southern Highlands. And we have a few research farms, which usually belongs to the School of Science. Um, and, you know, we conduct studies on agriculture, uh, veterinary studies, and um, animal, um, I think animal health, and um, other horticulture and other kind of, you know, uh, zoological kind of degrees and studies there in those farms. Apart from that, just six, 60 kilometers up from Sydney, we have the Campton or the Cobity campus, where again is a hub for our um, aviation infrastructure and aerospace and mechanical engineering and those kind of engineering kind of um, cohorts. And those students are taught um, there, like as in not taught, taught there, they are, taken to this facility to do their research work and to do any field work related to engineering and aerospace and mechanical kind of the cohorts. 
Beside that, we have the Cumberland campus, not a campus uh, per se, but it is where our um, health students spend a lot of their times, health and medicine students. Um, beside that, we have the Roselle campus. So we, and then after that, we have the Westmead campus where our students, our dentist students, our um, medical science students work and, um, you know, they complete, they fulfill the work component that is required uh, as a mandatory part of the course. So all of that is facilitated in the Westmead campus. We work uh, in partnership with the hospital there, with the public hospital. And beside that, we have the Broken Hill campus, which is, uh, which is very far from uh, Sydney, but that's again a facility where marine sciences and those kind of um, um, degrees and science uh, research hub is again placed in that area. Uh, beside that, we have the Orange and the Dubbo campus, which are again 400 and 250 kilometers away from Sydney, and the Narabi campus and the Lismore campuses, which are further away, uh, 500 kilometers and 750 kilometers ahead. So if you look at the demography of New South Wales and Sydney, the University of Sydney has a lot of spaces and areas which are designated for different work for different kinds of students and different cohorts of students. So um, yeah. That's a little bit about um, our demography and our spread across the state and the city. Now, moving ahead, as you already heard the first time, we are Australia's first university and the oldest university. We were established in 1850, and we were modeled uh, on the Oxford and Cambridge universities. The here on the right side, you can see a little excerpt of how our university campus looks like. This is the very well-renowned quadrangle, which is identical to um, uh, you know, the Oxford campuses that you have seen. Uh, a lot of movies, Hollywood movies, have been shot here, including Jackie Chan movies. Um, our university has also often uh, been um, misunderstood for the studio of Hogwarts, because we do look a lot like Hogwarts. But no, <laughs> unfortunately, we are not. But we do acknowledge that fact. And that's why we actually have a Quidditch club, a Quidditch team. So <laughs> there are many uh, Potter heads in our campus who plays Quidditch in the quadrangle inside this area. Uh, we are ranked 38 globally. We are the top, uh, so we are ranked 38 in the world. Um, we are ranked number one in Australia and fourth in the world for graduate employability. That is a very, very prestigious and proud ranking that we have. This ranking uh, indicates that no matter what degree you study at the University of Sydney, you, we teach in such a way and the kind of uh, student services and the offerings that we have at the university is sure to find you an employment while you're studying or as soon as you graduate, right? After that, we have unparalleled choice with more than 400 areas of study. So we offer the shared pool of electives and majors and minors where the student has the flexibility of choosing their units, the way they want to study and design their degree from a pool of more than 400 units and subject areas. So we don't build the um, degree for you. You have the flexibility of building your own degree. And for that, we have an offering of 400 areas of study. So you're literally spoiled for choices. After that, we of course have multiple merit-based scholarships on offer. And it's very good to note that admission and scholarships both into the University of Sydney is based on academic merit only. So um, we, of course, appreciate, um, you know, because we have so many clubs and societies, et, et cetera, um, any extracurricular activities that you have or that you have um, achieved a high feat in is, of course, acknowledged. But that will not help you in attaining the admission into the university if you do not meet the minimum academic entry requirements. So academic entry requirements, like academic merit uh, is everything that we look for while we are talking about admission to the university, right? So a little uh, throwback for you here. So this is the University of Sydney when it was just built in 1860. And we are very proud of our history and our heritage. Uh, being the first and the oldest University of Sydney, we are, of course, one of the six sandstone um, university buildings. And this is how we looked in 1860 when it was first built. And if we move fast forward to 2021, this is how we look. 
we are still the same how we were built in 1860 our foundations our values our ethics and our culture remains to be the same the inclusive uh, community that we have built and the foundation on which our university was built was that every student every child should have equal access to unbiased education and we still stand by that emblem but except the other infrastructure across the university and except making it more friendlier and accommodating for students we haven't changed our values haven't changed so we are still the same yes then moving forward as i told you earlier sydney is much much more than classroom of course academics are important professional development academic studies is all that you choose your higher education for but these are also the prime years of your life the conditioning and the outlook and the exposure that you get now is going to stay with you till the end of your life so to make it the experience of once in a lifetime kind of an experience for you we are proud to say that we have over 200 clubs and societies within the university that you can choose from and you can pursue your passion meet new friends try something new that you've never done before. Like I said, we have the Quidditch club, which only seemed like uh, something that only Harry Potter can do in Hogwarts. You can actually do that in the University of Sydney. Uh, apart from that, we have so many clubs instead, like we have the drama club, we have the elocution club, dance, um, bands, uh, you know, even graffiti writing. So we have a graffiti tunnel in the university in that tunnel, wherever you look, from the ceilings to the walls to the uh, floor, everything is just decorated by graffitis. Um, so yeah, freedom of speech and freedom of art is definitely seen there in that particular area of our campus. Um, again, we have 250 plus international partners and the largest mobility program in Australia is actually hosted in the University of Sydney. So with the international partners, we mean we are partnered and we have a partnership that is with 250 plus international universities, colleges, education providers, uh, governments, etc. And through all of that partnerships, we have been able to offer the largest mobility program in Australia. That is, we offer, say, one semester in a different, in a partner university or a short term mobility programs, you know, like you can study three weeks in another partner university, uh, say um, in China or in um, UK, in Denmark, in uh, Sweden, uh, in the US. So if your uh, program offers a mobility program, we uh, as uh, staffs here, we definitely encourage our students to take advantage of one of these mobility programs, because trust me, they are such eye opening experiences for students which you may not be able to gain again in your life. This is the time to do all of that. So yes, apart from that, as I was telling, we have the social clubs as well, where we have creative arts and performance, sports and outdoor recreation, humanitarian community aid is also a very important part of our uh, university culture. Given that we are one of the biggest universities um, in Australia and the biggest university in NSW. So we partner a lot with the local government and the local councils here and uh, volunteer for humanitarian community aid works. The recent most example of that is, um, we were one of the vaccination centers for the COVID-19 vaccine rollout uh, con in conjunction with the NSW Health, that is the government uh, health department. And we um, did offer the approved vaccines uh, for our uh, population here. So, and we are very proud to do that. And we continue to do um, like liaise with such humanitarian community services as and when it comes available. Uh, food, beverage, cl clubs and societies, of course, uh, like social clubs, ethno-cultural social clubs. So we have a South Asian club. We have an Indian club. We have a Middle Eastern club. We have a Pakistani club, Sri Lankan club. So there are multiple such clubs where you can engage yourselves with so that you don't feel you're far from home because Trust me, when you choose an international education for yourself, when you choose to move out of your country, your friends and these social clubs becomes your new family. So definitely delve deep into these offerings that we have in the university, apart from just the classroom experience. 
Um, yeah, so we have the academic and professional clubs as well. We have a dedicated careers team who can help you with all your professional needs, like you know, writing a resume, writing a cover letter, how to look for your first job, how to look for part-time work, how to look for internships. So all of that is also offered at the university. We have professional development classes, as in we have the webinars. We host master classes physically when we go back to physical teaching and physical facilities again. Um, we currently held at least three um, uh, professional development sessions in the university every month. And those were directed towards different cohorts. So one for undergraduates, one for postgraduates, one for research students. So yeah, that's how it was uh, separated. So yeah, um, endless opportunities to network. We call in our um, industry partners, that is all the um, corporates that we are partnered with. And we call their, um, you know, the head of their departments there, our alumni who are currently working in one of those or either of those companies. They come in to have a chat with our students to tell them how their journey was and how you can be inspired to take the same steps ahead. Okay, now moving on. As you can see, SUFS, that is the Sydney University Sports Facility. We are Australia's premier tertiary sporting body. We are world known and like we are one of the most popular um, societies, like um, fitness societies in Sydney, in NSW. Um, there are 15,000 members. We have 45 sports and recreational clubs, which is in continuation with what I was speaking before. Um, elite athlete program manages 400 plus athletes per year across the leagues that we have here, the local leagues and the national leagues that we have here. As said earlier, we have produced 177 Olympians, 27 athletes competed in the Rio Olympics. Uh, but I think there's a little backdated because I should have included uh, about our results in the 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympics, where the the hockey club, uh, you know, the hockey team uh, who uh, got the silver medal in the Tokyo Olympics is actually the hockey team of the University of Sydney. And uh, the swimmer in the female section who won the gold medal is again from the University of Sydney. So we are very proud of our students who have won such high accolades in the um, Tokyo Olympics. Uh, they are the true representation of the kind of values that we have at the University of Sydney, that we are not just all about classrooms and all about academics. We do give a lot of weightage and importance to co-curriculars like this. Um, of course, we are the oldest university in Australia. So the Sydney rugby team at the University of Sydney is also the oldest club in Australia and the eighth oldest club in the world. Right, so moving on a little about um, how exactly, what is the proximity at which we are located? So if the center of the collage is the University of Sydney, a little, um, just a 10 minutes walk is the Sydney CBD. There's the Broadway, which is um, the most lively, um, you know, the cultural and the busiest hub of Sydney. All the shops, stores, major cross sections, um, you know, historical buildings, everything is there. So that's the CBD, that's the major hub. Apart from that, just a three minutes walk to the left of the campus, you will find the Victoria Park, which is pretty much within the campus of University of Sydney. This was gifted by the NSW uh, government to the University of Sydney a few years ago. And it is a very beautiful lush green park with uh, a lot of flora and fauna all across. Um, yeah, in between classes, if you want to recharge yourself, you can definitely go there, lie down, take a, a quick afternoon nap and come back to the class again. Uh, 30 minutes on a bus and you reach the world famous Bondi Beach. Um, and of course, I probably don't have to say a lot about the Bondi Beach because you can look up about it on Google, but it is definitely one of the most spectacular beaches and one of the most um, gorgeous locations that you can think of, which is nearest to uh, the university and the city circle. Uh, five minutes, just, it, um, just a walk and you will reach Newtown. Newtown is the student suburb, as we call it here. So it is filled with uh, students from all across the world, from Europe and from uh, US, like name a region and you will find people from that region in that area. 
there are many, many cafes, eateries, shops, um, clubs, and everything in that area. Newton, which is just a five minutes walk from the campus. In fact, you will either have to get down, uh, like um, if you have to go to the University of Sydney and if you live in some far off suburb, then you will have to take the train and you will have to get off either in Newtown or in Redfern. So those are the two nearest uh, train stations anyway to go to the university. Okay, a lot about how beautiful the city and University of Sydney is. I'm now going to move on to a little bit more about the academic standings of the university. As um, Manat has already mentioned, the best and brightest minds definitely lives here in the University of Sydney. Um, she pointed out rightly that we have taught seven prime ministers, 23 justices, as in judges, of the high courts of Australia, 110 Rhodes Scholar and 140 Olympians, which is a very, very big um, achievement, uh, academic and professional, both for the university. We were also first university, like one among the first universities in the world to have admitted female students in as early as 1881, when majority of the uh, Western universities and all the other universities which existed at that time globally did not admit female students or were hesitant to admit female students. We were definitely one among the first in the league to admit them. And we have actually uh, recorded in our archives that these first students in 1881 graduated with their full degree uh, in three and four years. And also we, uh, they were among the first of our medical students who studied medicine at the University of Sydney. Now, once you join the University of Sydney, you will join a community with over 130 nationals, as I told you. So 73,000 students, including 30,000 international students is the capacity of our campus. So that's the number, the total number of uh, students uh, you will find in the University of Sydney. Um, again, being the oldest and the first university, of course, we have the largest uh, amount of global alumni. There is over 280,000 plus and counting every year, every semester, a number of global alumni. So wherever you go, you will definitely find one of our University of Sydney alumni uh, somewhere around you. Moving ahead, um, as I said earlier, you can choose from over 400 study areas. The major schools of studies, the areas of studies that we offer at the University of Sydney is architecture, urbanism, and interaction design, arts and social sciences, business and economics, uh, education and social work, engineering and IT, health, medicine, and dentistry, and uh, law, music, science, agriculture, environment, and veterinary sciences. Um, Moving ahead, most of our degrees, uh, of our subjects, as you can see here, are ranked in the top 50 in the QS World University rankings by subject. The subject rankings of this year has come out as well. And most of our subjects have been able to retain their rankings in the top 50s. So most of our arts and social sciences degrees, as you can see here, like subject areas, are very, very well ranked with the highest, I think is geography under that cohort, which is ranked 15 in the world and social policy and administration, that is public policy, IR, uh, political studies, all of these comes under the same school uh, of which social policy and administration, um, sorry, and the performing arts actually is ranked 15. So yes, that is our standing for the arts and social sciences school. After that, we have the business school where you can see the top two that we have. Science, medicine and health, engineering and IT, architecture and design planning, health sciences. For health sciences, our sports related subjects are ranked number four in the world, which is higher than any, any other Australian universities. Um, so yeah, if you see here, all the seven and eight of our um, schools have their uh, degrees and the subjects in the world top 50. So if, if, if anybody ever asks me, you know, which, which university would be the best at the University of Sydney? I have no one answer because we have the best uh, offerings in, across all our schools. And that's a very, very proud ranking again that we have. What will you achieve? As I said earlier, we are ranked first in Australia and fourth in the world for graduate employability, which means no matter what you study, with our design of uh, degrees and with our design 
of um, you know the entire four years and the duration of your studies here and with our partnerships with our global um, engagements with our industry partnerships you are sure to find the right employment for yourself and we will help you in achieving that we are also ranked number 2 in the world for uh, world impact which is the sdg uh, as um, outlined by the un so our university is known to align by most of the sustainable development programs um that are have been outlined by the un and that's why we have very proudly uh, received the rank of number 2 in the world to have uh, been um following and rather committing to all of those uh, impact indicators okay so what does it look like to study at the university of sydney um as i said we are going to run into the december summer month so we observe our summer holidays in december january and february so as soon as this long summer break is over in february we start with our first semester classes the orientation week or the welcome week also is held in the same time say around in mid february and then we have our full fledged classes the semester 1 classes which is the autumn <laughs> autumn time in australia so yes march april may is the semester 1 in between this uh, these three months we have a mid semester break for about two weeks which usually happens after the first semester first term exam and then we run into a two weeks uh, break which is in mid april and then we go on with the rest of the semester then we have the uh, exam period for sem 1 which is usually held in june and then we have a six weeks winter holiday so from june july august september these are usually our winter months like very very cold winter months and um in july we observe the six weeks winter holiday and then we again come back to campus for our second semester second semester starts in the first week of august usually and then uh, we again go on till september mid september where we have our first uh, term exams and assignments and all the submissions done and then again we run into a two week semester break which is the spring break and then after that we come back again to campus and then we study till end of october and then we run into the november exam period and after that again we run into the same summer holiday so that is how it looks like so in total if you see the flexibility and the um, workload or the study load is very minimal and we try to design it in such a way so that our students are able to cope up and the students are able to focus better um and our classes are also you know it's not like you're going to have classes monday to friday uh from 9 am to 5 pm there are uh, they are held in a very different manner and i'll come to that later so this is how a typical study year looks like english language requirements yes uh, for all international students who come from a non english speaking background or non english speaking country english language uh, test is a must that you have to submit alongside your other application um uh, requirements like you know the semester mark sheets or like your class uh, the final year mark sheets and your school leaving certificate apart from that like as you have to meet the merit requirements that is um which is very subjective to each degree so apart from meeting the entry requirements the merit requirements you also have to meet the english language requirements we accept ielts academic toefl pte CET and the Cambridge English Advanced Test. If you're doing the A levels, we can um, chat more about that after this. So yeah, uh, there of course are a few uh, degrees like the nursing pre-registration degrees where they do not accept any of these English tests. They have a different way of assessing the English proficiency due to the re uh, registration requirements of their profession. Uh, moving on, again we have a. quite a few international student scholarships whether you're an undergrad or postgrad or a research student we have plenty of uh, scholarships that could be right for you depending on your situation depending on what you are um, coming to study and um, you know your marks your scores your grades everything is important to assess the right scholarship for you now 
in theory, we have the general scholarships that is offered by the university as a whole. Then we have the faculty scholarships, which are offered by the specific faculties that you are enrolling in. And then we have the student government research training program, like the RTP scholarships, which are more focused for our research uh, students. Uh, the, here is the website. I can share the link of this website with you after the presentation and you can go through to see um, the entire list of scholarships that we have in offer for international students. Um, needless to say, make the world your campus, really, because um, we have faculty specific programs where, you know, each of our faculty specific, not just the University of Sydney as a whole, but say like our university, um, the architecture school has specific partnerships with other architecture schools and universities in the other side of the globe. Then we have the short term programs. As I told you earlier, Australia's largest mobility program is actually offered at the University of Sydney. So you don't just have to stay in Sydney to get the degree from the University of Sydney. You can study with us and you can take advantage of our uh, mobility programs and go to other universities and other countries, spend your time there, learn from there and come back again and just widen your horizons really. Then again, as I told you, we have the semester or the year exchange. So we offer exchange programs where oftentimes you will find many students from our partner universities from say US or um, Canada is going to share the classroom with you. Although they don't study in the University of Sydney, they will be studying one of the semesters or one of the years with you. Same way, you can also go out to other countries for one semester or for one year to complete a few of the, your units and uh, you know a few of your semester and your uh, study uh, subjects in some uh, partner universities of us as a part of the exchange program. As it's mentioned here, we really aim to ensure that 50% of our students undertake one of these exchange programs because this definitely is a once in a lifetime opportunity and you wouldn't want to miss, on, uh, miss out on this. Next, according to current study information, because we're all badly and hard hit by COVID, semester one and semester two this year have featured both online and in-person classes, but we had to go back to complete online learning only where with the recent uh, COVID breakout in Sydney. After that, we have decided to continue with the remote delivery of teaching and assessment for as long as possible for students who are overseas, who are studying with us from other countries and are otherwise unable to return to campus. We are slowly looking at um, returning our international students back to the campus who are currently studying with us but are stuck overseas but till we can get everybody back on campus and till we can open up the australian borders completely like before covid to all of our international students we will continue to deliver remote delivery of all of our assessments um yeah as i mentioned the australian government has advised that this change in delivery will not impact compliance with visa conditions or for international students that is um after you study with us most of our students uh, aim to get the post study work visa and that will remain unchanged so if you are studying with us and if you are entitled to the 3 years or the 2 years post study work visa which you can apply for as soon as you graduate you will still be able to apply for that regardless of your location of studies. For more information, I have attached the link to the Department of Home Affairs for the Australian government here. I can share that link with you again on the chat. There are a few FAQs, which I am not sure if you have in your mind, but these are one of the most frequently asked questions that I have received in the past few months. Um, one of the top ones among that is, I am unable to attend any in-person classes due to travel restrictions. Can I continue to study remotely? Yes, you can. Remote delivery is going to be offered for all of our um, foreseeable, uh, you know, upcoming semesters. And we will not stop um, offering the online uh, classes and the online assessment um, patterns due to the changed world that we're all living in now. Um, just for information, even domestic students who are in Sydney are not allowed to go back to campus and they are all studying from uh, their home. Uh, ever since the pandemic has broken out. Next one is, will exams take place in person? Okay, so tests, exams and assessments can all be taken um, online. There are a few um, components of assessments though, like group discussion and classroom attendance. 
which uh, has a certain weightage, like say 10% or 20% of your final assessment weightage belongs to just tests and exams and assessment, uh, like, you know, the group discussions. For that, you will have to log into your class, class times uh, and you will have to engage in the class, like you have to actively discuss in the class. Otherwise, you will not be able to be, uh, like, we can't um, assess you otherwise if you don't log into your class and engage in the classroom. Uh, but apart from that, tests, exams, projects, assignments, everything can be held online. Uh, units of study outlines will be updated with assessment details as well, and students will be notified via Canvas, which is an intranet. Um, that's a Sid any University of Sydney student will have access to the Canvas, where we update all of our academic um, modules and um, assessment reports and exam period timelines and everything. So as well as through ongoing communication, of course, from your unit coordinators and your professors, wherever it's appropriate. You will always be notified. So never think you will be uninformed about any of our steps. We at least give one month of notice prior to anything that is required for you to submit or anything like that. Third, if I start studying online in 2021, will I be able to finish my degree remotely? Yes, so most courses are only being offered remotely because the student borders are closed and they are now slowly opening up. So you will only be able to complete remotely when borders open if the course is normally offered online, right? Um, you must have heard of you, might not have heard that uh, the Australian, sorry, the NSW government in partnership with all of the NSW um, universities of which the University of Sydney is a very important part, uh, is looking at welcoming back international students back into the campus, uh, starting from the 6th of December. So we have this uh, new pilot program, which is introduced to bring all of our continuing and current students who are currently studying with us and are based remotely. The EOI process has started and the university is contacting the students according to the volume manageable from time to time. So if you start studying with us, your chances of coming back to the campus is definitely higher than if you are just looking at studying with us and if you haven't applied for your visas yet. Um, so yes, the, a lot of good news is coming out. The last two weeks, we have heard a lot of announcements from the Australian government and from the NSW local governments that students are now included in um, the border openings and they will be welcomed back into the campus as soon as possible. So we are definitely all optimistically looking forward to that day. Moving forward, I'm overseas and there will be a time difference. Will lectures or tutorials be recorded and available for viewing later? Absolutely, yes. We um, use certain softwares um, where we record all of our uh, class um, lectures, our tutorials, all the slides and presentations and resources that the uh, teacher or the professor have used. Um, and those are always available uh, online for you to view and read through at your own time because they are not just used as, you know, um, a lecture recording, but they're also very handy while you're doing your project or you're, or you're preparing for your exams. Uh, even in normal times, when we had classes on campus, even then we used to have all of our lectures recorded and available for viewing later. So this is not something new. This has always existed since 2013 in our university. Um, moving on. Okay. Um, of course, I will answer all of your questions. The FAQs were just to uh, highlight a few of the most uh, asked questions now. But I can see we have a lot of questions in the chat box already. So, of course, I'm going to answer all of that. Uh, we have accommodation services. Um, we offer both on-campus and off-campus accommodation advices. Um, the most, you know, the to start with the top four, like we, the University of Sydney has four accommodation options. Uh, university residential halls and dorms. This is the regimen building. This is one of those. And here the rent varies from 205 to 431 Australian dollars per week, depending on the kind of accommodation you choose. And, uh, you know, like we have self catered where you have to cook for yourself or catered um, accommodation services where um, we will be giving you food coupons and you can, um, you know, use our. Um, catering services. Apart from that, you have the residential colleges where the rent looks something like this per week. And then we have off-campus and private housing options where the University of Accommodation, uh, sorry, the University of Sydney will help you 
in uh, assessing where to live, what to talk about, because hunting that first home, that first uh, accommodation can be very daunting. So uh, to have the right expectations and to go ahead with the right advices, we have the off-campus and private accommodation team uh, who will help you to choose the right suburb the, and will negotiate the rent for you and will tell you about everything else that you have to discuss with your landlord before you uh, lock in those properties. Independently owned buildings, of course, we are partnered with a company called Urbanest and we use their facilities as well to house our uh, students. And the rents there, of course, varies again between the range of 354 to $562 per week. For more information on accommodation services, I have the email address and their information here. You can definitely reach out to them, but this can be done anytime after you have accepted your letter of um, your offer letter. Moving forward, we have the student support services. The and all of our student support services are free and confidential for all of our students. So don't ever hesitate in sharing your information with them or you know your real uh, circumstances with them because it's important to know your real issues and your real circumstances before we can uh, offer our services to you. And please be assured that whatever you share with our student support teams, they're all held confidentially and nothing is ever, you know, like nothing, uh, like nothing ever goes out of those four walls. So we have the career center, as told you earlier, we also have the child care information office, we have the counseling and psychological services team, we have the disability services team, financial assistance services, student accommodation services, and then across the campus, and all of this actually, these um, six offerings are located on the level five of the Jane Force Russell building. That is where uh, my office is as well. So I am in this floor, in the second floor, and all of these services are above our offices here. Apart from that, we have other services located uh, across the campus, the Multi-Faith Chaplaincy Center, which is, um, you know, we have a musallah, we have a chapel, we have a prayer room for Hindus. So as we are a multicultural university, these are a few of the basic um, services that we have to come in the building, in the university. We have the university health services, learning center, maths learning center. Uh, for a lot of students who struggle with the nightmare called maths, we also have a learning center for that. Uh, okay, so I think I'm pretty much at the end of my um, presentation here. I just want to show the last slide here, that is Explore the University of Sydney in 360 degrees. So here is a virtual tour of our campus. I can share this link with you as well on the chat later and you can have a virtual look through our campus. Um, I think as an international student, these are uh, some of the very useful contacts that you will need uh, once you start your journey with studying with us and throughout your um, tenure with us. The international recruitment team is where I sit and you can reach out to me through this um, email address. For other queries on, you know, um, how to choose units or how to enroll in a few units or how to apply for credit exemption and all those kind of services, um, you can reach out to this. this. This is the contact center for prospective students. Apart from that, we have the university course search page where you can see the list of all of our degrees and courses that we offer at the University of Sydney, and I can share that with you as well. And then we have the international student scholarships where you can see the list of all the scholarships that we offer. And of course, University of Sydney Accommodation Office, which will help you finding the right accommodation for when you come back to camp, for when you travel to the campus. So that is pretty much about the University of Sydney. And now I'm open for any questions that you may have. Thank you all for your time and patience. I'll just stop sharing the screen and then we can go back. Thank you, ma'am. It was truly an enriching and empowering presentation. Ma'am, may I now invite our moderator for this session, Ms. Kanchan, to share with you the questions raised by our valued audience. Yeah, muted Kanchan, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the, the very beautifully and captive presentation. 
you have given and i am sure that the students have got insight about the prospects available at the university of sydney uh, the questions which are there in the chat box most of those are answered by you actually the just i would read out the questions um, does university of sydney offer undergraduate in medicine you yes have, uh, we do yes and yeah. also procedure for yes i'll go from the first question it is may i know what is the procedure of medical okay admissions in medical in your university so you have yeah. given the detailed uh, description yes. about that yes ma'am yes <laughs> So yeah, of course we do offer medicine in the University of Sydney, and um, for medicine you must know that most international students they have to combine the uh, degree in with the uh, Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Medical Sciences. That's how you study. It's a seven years long degree, and uh, so it's a lot of studies that you're looking at. Uh, but of course uh, we also have some mandatory work component attached to the degree as well. What I will do is I will share the link of this degree. uh with you on the question box and you can go through this after we are done with the presentation and if you have any questions i have given you the correct contact feel free to reach out to us at any time you want to i'm just going to share the related ones with you we can move on to the next question yeah the most of the questions are related to medicine i think one question is related to what are the placements offered for humanities Okay, so as I said earlier, the University of Sydney does not offer placement services, which we know um, from our background and knowledge. But what we do offer is, um, you know, internship opportunities and other career uh, accelerating tools, uh, depending on the faculty that you're enrolled in, especially. So every faculty has their own career team, and you can uh, take help of those career team in identifying what you want to work as, where you want to work. what kind of exposure you want to gain and they can place you accordingly in one of our partner organizations or even if we don't have one of your interested organizations in our partner list we can look at seeking such kind of opportunities for you and we can give you an um, lor that's like a letter of recommendation so that you can pursue your dreams there there are questions one or two about scholarship which you have explained very well then they are asking about undergrad engineering that also what is the acceptance rate that is the last question apart okay. from that everything you have covered in your <laughs> presentation yeah um look acceptance rate uh, as i told you um you know it's all it's all about um academic merit but if i really have to go with a statistic i think the latest one that we had for university of sydney the acceptance rate is what a rate was about 30% so yeah that's what you're looking at it's it's i know <laughs> it might not be very <laughs> impressive a number to look at but that is what we mean when we say that uh, we depend a lot more like we focus a lot more on quality than quantity so we are we usually have very small classroom sizes but all of our classroom size it, in, even in those small classroom sizes we actually have students from all backgrounds from all walks of life from all cultural um, and ethnic backgrounds and they're all really the top of the cream that we can uh, get into the university so that every so wherever you go across the university you can learn something from everywhere you can um, mingle with like minded people so yeah thank you ma'am for your elaborate answers and all the queries which are given put up by our students and uh, they can always one one on one contact with you as the Absolutely. link is given so yes. i would just hand over to the moderator to take forward the session the compares sorry yes manat thank you ma'am we are truly grateful for your relevant valued and patient answers to all our queries I am sure the participants are enlightened and have got a true picture about the prospects available for them at your esteemed organization. Attendees do remember to fill in the feedback form which is posted in the chat box and is also available on the official website www.avenueoman.com. And those who are viewing us on YouTube, please refer to the description box for the link of the feedback form. 
as we have come to an end of this session i reckon it a privilege to put my gratitude into words it is my pleasure to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the indian school alwadi alkawi the organizing team and the entire audience let me first express a profound gratitude to his majesty sultan hatem bin tariq al said for the magnanimous benevolence showered on the indian diaspora in the sultanate of oman may the almighty shower abundant blessings on his majesty and this peaceful and prosperous country of our residents we extend heartfelt thanks to our eminent speaker ms joymini seal from the university of sydney thank you ma'am the session was truly informative and enlightening it opened up new vistas in front of us our deepest sense of appreciation and gratitude to dr shivakumar manikum chairman board of directors indian schools in the sultanate of oman senior principal and education advisor bod indian schools in the sultanate of oman mr mp vinoba and other valued members of the board of of the boards of indian schools in oman and all participating schools from across the globe acclaimed officials from cbse distinguished guests from the indian embassy thank you sirs and ma'ams for your encouraging presence and guidance at all times our sincere thanks to mr alkesh joshi the president indian school alwadi alkabir management committee and other members of the committee for their overwhelming encouragement at all times I also wish to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude to our tower of strength and source of motivation our principal Mr D N Rao honorable principals all the participating schools in the MENA region vice principals assist vice principals coordinators supervisors and the entire teaching community across the globe for their support guidance and active involvement We are indeed grateful to our platinum sponsor, Sadiko Gold Sponsors, Jain Group of Institutions, Grey Matter Academics, Velo Institute of Technology, and Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Tech Education. Bronze Sponsors, Middle East College, Thapar University, and Dallas Baptist University, and MIT World Peace University, Pune. Our digital partner, Spectrum, and our media partner, The Arabian Stories. I wish to thank each and every student and parent for their valuable presence in making this session of our Global Career Fair Avenue 2021 a grand event. An event of this kind requires the coordination of a committed team. My earnest and heartfelt thank you to my ISWK team behind the scene working tirelessly in making Avenue 2021 a tangible reality. Last but not the least. I thank Almighty God for making this session a great success. Thank you all, and see you for the upcoming sessions. We have a presentation by the University of Melbourne and a presentation by Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education, starting from ten forty-five a.m. Gulf Standard Time. In the talk by Dr. Chenraj Roychan Jain, titled "Do You Want to Be the Next Millionaire or Billionaire?" and a presentation by Swinburne University, Australia, starting from twelve p.m. Gulf Standard Time. Take care and buckle up for the upcoming sessions. Dear audience, part your re reminder to fill in the feedback form which has been posted in the chat box. For those who are viewing us on YouTube, please fill in the feedback form which has been posted in the description box. Once again, take care. Signing off, your compares for the session, Joe and Manat. Thank you everyone